What is going on YouTube today? Man, I had an idea for a video. Well, not for a video, I guess it's the same thing, but it's like I had an idea for food because I wanted to go off a title. But I ordered some food, so I got myself a chicken sandwich from a place called Mosey's. I've had it on the channel before. I think their, their chicken sandwich was like really good. To quite honest with you, Nashville hot chicken sandwich. But I originally wanted to get their beef brisket. And I was like, wow, I really like their beef brisket. And I was gonna title the name of this video like double beef and beef and beef or some, something that has to do with double beef because like I wanna talk about what's happening with like Kendrick Lamar and Drake and I want to eat beef, but you know that didn't happen. So whatever, I guess I got a chicken sandwich. So I guess it's chicken and beef. So here we got some, okay, so here's the fries here. Here's a sandwich, like, look at that, woo. A huge just cut of thing. Oh, I forgot to take out tomatoes. Oh well, huge just cut of chicken there. So here we go. So we're gonna get into it here. But before we get started, remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below if anything you want to try to talk about. I'm down to that, so check out the timestamps down below. All right, so let's get into it here. The first bite is probably not gonna have any bread in it because it's just all chicken, so. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's a nice piece of chicken cutlet. Wow, that's good. The fry here. At least these are fries. A little bit soggy, but you know. Not every place can have the type of fries that I like. Mmm. I'll go for another bite here. This is really good. Mmm. 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 With some sandwiches, I like this bread too. I want this type of bread called. It's like that bread that like Tim Horton juices for like, like their um, what is it? The, like turkey sandwiches and they used to have chicken minis or chicken minis. Right here, nice little like spice to it. Not like overpowering where you can't eat it, but nice little spice to it. I am enjoying that. Mm. Let's take a bite with the pickle in it. Yeah, I mean. I personally don't think the pickle adds much, but you know, adds something. I could probably go a bit without it, but you know, you know, I can see why some people would like like it in there. Just it's like one little piece of like strip of pickle in it, so it's like, what is it really doing there? Mm. But how was your guys' day today? My day's been pretty good. I know the videos come out pretty consistently, like all the time, but I've been like pretty ahead with my videos, so I haven't technically made a video in like four or five days. And in the four or five days, so much has happened. In terms of hip hop, this is like one of the best moments I've ever experienced in hip hop. Next to the Donda roll out, because there's so much going on. So much discourse on Twitter, so we'll run through what happened really quick. So, Kendrick, just everyone, I like that. Drake made a diss, fell back on it. You know, was like, I don't want a part any part of this. Which this man now thinking back to is pretty smart because I'm seeing what's going on. It's crazy. So he pulled back from it, and Drake came out with this, which is called Push Ups. Not too bad. Not like the best diss. Had like some pretty like clever bars in it and stuff, but like not anything like incredible or amazing to my personal opinion. But this is rap beef, pretty good. And then Kendrick came back with another song called Euphoria, which I thought was really good.
I really like the beat for that one. That one was really good. Euphoria, he talks about like so much things. He kind of like dissects like uh, Drake and talks about like how he uses like his uh his blackness as a costume and things like that. And he like kind of alludes to him being like not a good person. So it was pretty good. I liked it better than push-ups personally, but I know some people were on the fence about it because they're both pretty good songs. The other thing about me was like Euphoria is more like focused, whereas push-ups wasn't. It was kind of like talking to multiple people. And then right after that, Kendra came out with a new song called 616, which like goes a bit more into the Drake and it talks about like just more, just more about him. Like honestly, the, the disses are kind of like just saying the same things over and over again, just like in a different way. So 616 to me was more like a warning shot talking about how like he has more on Drake and he doesn't want to like go there, but if he has to stoop low, he will stoop low. Oh man, good day ever. There's so many like layers to 616, like the title. It was like Father's Day. It was like the same time Euphoria came out. And then the reason why there's Euphoria, like the track is because Drake, well, here's like what people speculate, but I believe it. Drake executive produced Euphoria and Euphoria also came out on 616, whenever year it was, 616. And it's a show about like the sexualization of teenagers, which Drake likes to do. So it's like crazy. So, and I can't remember if it was Euphoria or 616. Kendrick said to Drake, I can predict your angle, which is very interesting because it plays an important part on an extra track. So, a couple, I don't remember how long it took, but like maybe like a day later, Drake came out with a song called Family Matters, right? And Family Matters wasn't hyper focused either. He was like talking about a bunch of people, but he like at the end was talking about like, uh Kendrick Lamar about how he beats his like ex-wife or something like that and he like likes to he's not like nice to women and things like that which there's been accusation before I'm not too sure whether he does or doesn't I I actually forgot that he was even accused of that but like I mean rich people doesn't matter how good they may seem I feel like every rich person has like a dark side so I wouldn't doubt it but at the same time I don't really know because there isn't really any anything substantiated, but the video was pretty interesting. The video had like, he had like a chain was supposed to be like, I think it was supposed to imitate like Pharrell's, like uh, one of Pharrell's diamonds or something like that. He had like the, so in like Gid Can Man City, the cover is like a, it's like a Chrysler town and country or something like that. He got great, he got like a Dodge Caravan and broke it, but like, you know, the symbolism is still there. It's pretty interesting. B was cool. He did something beat switches and stuff with it. Enjoyable listen. But it was a good listen for all 15 minutes, right? Because 15 minutes after he released that, Kendrick released a song called Meet the Gram. And Meet the Grams took all the smoke and fire out of Family Matters because remember Kendrick said that he could predict Drake's whole angle? He had this diss ready because he already knew Drake's gonna talk about his like family and stuff like that. So Kendrick came out with a song 50 minutes later and the song was like a bombshell. It really took all like the hype out of uh, Drake's what I would call his like smoking gun or ace in the hole, I forget the term for it, but you guys know what I'm talking about. And basically Meet the Grams, he was just talking about how Drake is like a predator and how he surrounds himself with predators in some insane that how he has like a second child. Now, let's, let's, let's touch, those are like the main points of it. Let's touch on those uh, things because I did say for Kendrick, you have to have like some evidence and some receipts, which you do, which Kendrick also needs to. However, with the, with the false kid thing, or with the, with the second kid thing, we already know Drake's hitting a second kid, but this one, I don't know how true it is because I feel like Drake isn't dumb. He wouldn't do it a second time, right? And then there's like these claims. Side note, someone said I'm really teethy when I eat. At least that's what I gather from the comments. It's actually really funny. I just really like show my teeth when I bite. Never even took that in. Hilarious. Anyways, about the second kid, I wouldn't doubt it, 
there were like articles from like years ago where people were speculating whether he did have a daughter. I do like I do see like people talk about that stuff like that, but at the same time, I don't know how true that is because it was never confirmed and no one ever paid attention to it. The second thing, him having like predators around him, that's not even an opinion. That's true because one person in his camp talks about all the time is Baka not nice. That's like the name of the guy. And that guy, he, I'm pretty sure he has like trafficking charges against women and things like that, and like abuse charges. So that's where like I'm just like, okay. That's actually true. Why is that guy around? And then about Drake himself being a predator. He didn't, he kind of implied that Drake is one, but he never outright said that you are one, right? And that's basically the main points of it. Now, after that, Kendrick released another song the next day called like, Not Like Us. And I think he heard everyone on Twitter talking about like how his Jack Kendrick songs aren't like club worthy. So he made a club song and this song's pretty good. It's a very like West Coast beat. It's made by DJ Mustard. The best beat that DJ Mustard's made in like, I don't even remember the last like nine years or eight years. Basis is like 2016. So he came on a beat with like, he came on a track with DJ Mustard. The track is really good. It's like really hype. It's really like in terms of beat, it's very, it's very, Energetic. Oh, another thing they talk about, I'm gonna just backtrack for a second. Another thing to talk about, I think he's in Euphoria, is that Drake has like, he got like liposuction, got like, like they, they keep calling him like BBL Drake because his like abs are like a BBL. Cause I guess he got like a liposuction to like reduce all the fat. And one of the bars that Kedrick says is like, show me where you got your abs, vroom vroom V12. And a V12 is like a machine, like a liposuction machine. It's actually, it's also a pretty good bar. So, but anyways, yeah. So Jack Kendrick comes out with another song. This is like the fourth song by Kendrick. While Drake's only released two called Not Like Us. And he just talks about how, like how Drake isn't, I guess the best way to put it is that Drake's not like welcome to the culture. That's not the main point of the song. The main point of the song is that Kendrick just like double, triple, quadruple down on calling him a predator. He calls him certified pedophiles and he's like, he's like, aren't you tired of trolling? You're trying to strike a chord, it's probably a minor. Now, I do agree that they both need to show like some concrete evidence about what they're accusing each other of. Because they're very serious accusations. One, like he like abuses women. The other one, I guess, abuses women in a different way. Now, the only thing, the reason why I'm siding with Kendrick on this side, just in terms of like the rap beef, is because Drake is known to have questionable relationships with women, especially younger women. So there's a video of him when he was like 25 making out with like a 17 year on stage she tells him his age and he still like makes out with her and like gropes her and all that stuff that girl even came on twitter i think today earlier today and was like oh it's no big deal yeah when you're underage you're not gonna think it's a big deal especially if it's like a one-time instance that's usually how like trauma and those things that kind of work you know you kind of just like it's whatever aside from that he had like questionable relationships with millie bobby brown now she denies anything ever happened, but doesn't discount the weirdness of it because why are you texting a 14 year old? Cause I'm pretty sure she was 14 at the time and telling her you miss her. When's the last time you've told a 14 year old girl that you miss her? Like you, the viewer as an adult, probably unless it's like your kid or like, you know, a family member or something, probably never. So it's like, it's, it's, it's freaking weird. Even if you didn't do anything with her, it's still, it's still questionable. And then he was at Kylie Jenner's birthday when she was when she just turned 16. He's like holding her, kissing her. Like, okay, you guys are like close friends, but at the same time, it's like she's still 16, right? Like, it's it's still like it's still freaking it's still weird, right? Then I don't know how old Kylie is now, but I imagine Drake was in his late 20s early thirties at that time. So, and the thing is the thing reason, another reason why I'm like signing with Kendrick on the side of the beef is because he brings up a lot of good points, a lot of multiple points. Drake kind of only like really brings up that he like abuses his wife or abuses women. And it's like, okay, fine. That's what you want to go with. But like, you got to go with like other things because aside from like Drake calling him like a predator or things like that, he's also questioning his blackness. He's questioning like his, his identity, essentially is seeing how he like mooches off of like other cities and other people's cultures, which to be fair, I don't know. I'm a third party, just like everyone else watching it and seeing like through the years what's happening. I don't know if I would even call, call what he was doing, like stealing from the city. Cause I literally see people from like Atlanta talking about that's not like, 
that's not really what like Drake did. But at the same time, I don't know. You probably find people who are saying the opposite, saying like, yeah, that is what Drake did, right? So, and I respect. I don't know. But the fact that like Kendrick is saying that like Drake shouldn't say the N word because he like is wearing his like black identity as a costume and then Drake coming out with a diss and then making a joke saying that he's rapping like he's trying to free the slaves is like I feel like that's just supporting the reason why Kendrick was saying like he doesn't want him to say the N words because like how are you gonna say that to someone when they're like questioning you like that so it's like I don't know and then after Not Like Us came out, Drake came out with a song. I think it came out yesterday. And the song is called The Heart Part 6. Now, the name I like is like, it, that's good because Kendrick comes out with like The Heart. That's like his series before he drops an album, right? Good name for a song. Horrible song, though. Not horrible. I actually love the beat for the song. I'm so sad that the beat's wasted on like a diss track. Cause I really like the beat for that song. I'm just you know, like, damn, this is, this is a good beat. But basically, the track is basically like half of it saying, "No, -uh, I didn't do anything. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't touch any women." And then he like doubles down on Kendrick assaulting women. What? There's a twist. There's a twist. And there's a twist. I'm rambling a lot because I'm passionate about this this like topic because I love rap battles. I just love hip hop. So there was a, a Twitter theory that I seen going on. And I see it fester and then build on Twitter and Reddit where they're seeing that Drake gave Kendrick fake information, right? About the daughter, like just about the daughter. And then he ran with him and he made a diss song about him like having a daughter and, and Drake basically orchestrated the whole plan. That's point number one. I don't agree with that. Two reasons, I seen on Twitter, two when Kendrick came out with the diss, he was just like, oh, someone finds my daughter, bring him to me. Why would you not just say, oh, like I, I gave him the, I gave him, I gave him that leaked information just to trick him. Ha ha ha. I did it. Right. I'm going to slam dunk in my opinion. Right. But also he has no receipts that he did it. So that's another thing. And then the third thing is that in his last song, the last song that just came out, Heart Part 6, he says the people who gave you the leaked information are clowns. And then like, I think it's literally four bars later. He's just like, we spent a whole week giving, feeding you false information. So are you calling yourself a clown? I don't understand. Like you said who gave it to you as a clown. And then you're saying you guys gave it to him. So you're just calling yourselves clowns, whatever. And then he says, I didn't like touch any children. I didn't have any questionable relationships with children or teenagers, I guess. Now, here's the thing. I was basically him just saying, no, I didn't do it. No, -uh. I mean, at the same time, what are you supposed to do in that situation? You kind of have to deny it. The angle at which he attacks it to deny it is, I think, one of the worst angles I've ever heard in my life. So he basically says, I'm too rich and famous to be a predator. What? Weinstein was famous, predator. The diddler, P. Diddy is like on the run, predator. Uh, who else? R, Ke R. Kelly. People have been knowing uh, since like the 90s that R. Kelly was a predator. And he just now got put in jail a few years ago. So it's like, same with Harvey Weinstein and Jeffrey Epstein. Jeffrey Epstein wasn't as famous. He more just like a really rich guy with like really powerful connections because of what he's doing. But that is, I think that's probably a worse, I feel like, him saying that makes me believe that he's more of a predator than I did before. Like, forget what Kendrick said. Him saying that makes me feel like he's more of a predator because what is that, right? Basically says that, and then he brings up Millie Bobby Brown, which by the way, I know I just brought it up because it was in the context of explaining his like past with like women, like underage women, but no one brought him up. So it's like, why are you bringing her up? If no one brought him, I understand it's like a play on like, a, cause he says like the bar is like something about Whitney, which is Kendrick's wife. And then he brings up Bobby. It's like a kind of a play on Whitney Bobby. But at the same time, I feel like bringing her up did more damage than that word play there. I mean, I cool, I guess it's like a bar. If you think about it, but at the same time, it's like, at what cost you brought Millie Bobby around for what? You're fighting Kendrick, not the internet. All right. So, and then he also was just like, oh, I uh, forgive me if I'm wrong about this, but at the beginning, of that part of the song where he talks, where he starts addressing like being a diddler. He was just like, oh, I know you'd come with this Epstein angle. Kendrick correlated him to Weinstein, not Epstein. So it's just like, I feel like he just doesn't listen to what Kendrick is saying. And that is followed into this next part where he essentially says, I should finish this. Where he essentially says that like the reason why Kendrick is like so pressed on him, like painting Drake out to be a PDF file, right? Is because 
he was like you know assaulted as a kid and then he refers to a song that kendrick made called mother i sober on mr Malin brick separate he's like oh like isn't that talking about like that one i don't know the actual bar but it's like isn't that talking about that one song you made where you talk about you getting you know assaulted and here's how i know these guys are not paying attention these guys are not paying attention because that song that Drake is referring to isn't even about Kendrick getting assaulted. So essentially he's just saying that Kendrick is painting Drake out to be a PDF file because he was touched as a kid because he was referencing a song where Kendrick said he got touched as a kid. However, Kendrick didn't say that in the song. The song that Drake is referencing is him telling his mom that he didn't get assaulted as a kid because the mom is, a, is like kind of like passing out trauma because she was assaulted as a kid. So the mom was assaulted, passes out trauma to her child, asking and not believing him whether he got assaulted and Kendrick saying, no, I didn't get assaulted, but still passing on that trauma, right? So it's like the points are are, are mute, you know, like they, 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 they don't, they don't make any sense because the context in which you're referring to them doesn't even exist. Like it doesn't make sense. So now that you're, now that we established that Kendrick didn't, and he didn't even say that in the song, you're now painting this like narrative, calling Kendrick like a survivor of abuse and using that like abuse as the reason as to why he's like claiming him to be, you know, a predator when it's just like, no, we're calling you a predator or at least he's calling you a predator because you have a history with it, right? We've seen it. People have seen it. It doesn't like go away. I don't know how many times in this past like four days that I've seen that Drake video of him kissing that 17 year old on stage or 16, however old she is. She was like, it's insane. And in one of the previous songs, Kendrick is talking about how Drake's fabricating stories because he heard Mr. Morale. And that's like just another way, another ode to him predicting what Drake is gonna say because he just he just said that Drake's gonna fabricate stories because he heard Mr. Morale. Drake literally just fabricated a story because he kind of heard Mr. Morale. This man skimmed through the lyrics at like a third grade reading level. So it's like, it's it's insane. So this video I'm making on Monday, which is the, I think today is the sixth. So it's Monday and it's going to come out on the following Saturday, which I, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the 11th, right? I think. So I don't know if any more songs will come out. There will probably be like eight more Kendrick songs to come out. So by the time this comes out, it'll be behind. But but there's like, it's just crazy. And this is the reason why I kind of have to stay off of Twitter a little bit sometimes, depending on what it is, because I'm seeing people like Twitter literally rots your brain because I'm seeing people use like Kendrick being like an abuser as like some sort of defense for Drake having questionable relationships with like young women because yeah, okay, they're both bad. We're not gonna like do like a commentary on which one's like worse and things like that. That's not what the video is about. But you can't really be like, okay, well, if Drake's a if Drake's a PDF file, you know, what about Kendrick beating like, you know, women? Wh what about it? What about it? Okay, maybe they both need to come out and like like deny allegations or whatever. But the only problem is, at least for Drake, is that Drake has a history with it, and Kendrick, from what we have seen, there hasn't been anything about it that we've seen. So, I mean. I don't know. And then also his wife, Whitney, was on his like album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, where she's, I think she's calling Kendrick like a good father or like a good man or something like that. So it's like, and also another thing is Whitney's uh, 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 brother supports Kendrick. So let me ask you something. You, would you support the man who was assaulting your sister? No, I don't know anyone like that. I've never known anyone like that. So it's like, obviously. I could just be talking and it could just be not true. And that could also just be the case that he just doesn't care about his sister like that. But at the same time, I don't know. I'm just a bystander. I'm like, watch. I'm like, my eyes are glued to, I haven't looked away from Twitter in the past, like three, four days. It's just so entertaining. and I love it so much, but that's basically just my interpretation. My like thoughts on all this. I have so much thoughts. And I just forget them all the time like i'm gonna think of points that i missed that I, I like i want to talk about that i just forgot because it's just so much is happening and i just feel like kendrick could just not respond and he would still win because of this because i've never seen a, a, a diss track come out and people be like oh wow okay also i came out the day late another rapper like wrote drake's back to back which is like the song that like really buried me mill so it's like how much validity does he have in the battle rap game so it's like wow it's just it's just insane. So 
With that being said, remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below if anyone trying to talk about. I'm down to those, so check out Stitch videos in the side. And this is really good. I will probably give this, I can't remember, I'll give it the same thing I gave it last time. I, unless I, I didn't get this before, but I'll give it like an 8.79, 8 8.5 to 9. It's a really, so a strong 8, light 9, as Mr. Fantano says. It's pretty, pretty good, uh, pretty good sandwich. Like the chicken was nice and crispy, had flavor, had a nice little click kick to it, but not a kick that will like actually kick you. Muy caliente. And let me know what your guys' thoughts are on like the Drake and Kendrick beef. Um, let me know what you guys like who you guys think is winning and like what you guys think the outcome will be and then oh also metro booming this is the first time i've seen this metro booming came out with a diss beat that's not the first time you've seen it because kanye did with lift yourself but it's the first time i've seen someone make a diss beat and ask people to rap over it and hold a contest for it. so that's iconic and that is innovative i like that i like that a lot but anyways again thank you for watching mosey's nashville hot chicken sandwich 8.5 to 9 out of 10 let me know what you guys think for true view and peace